Doopy dee doopy. I'm trying to find you on Twitch. I've my internet sucks right here. <laughs> May not be able to. There we go. Fortune oh, TVs. <laughs> it's not a bad lag either. You just literally said that. There we go. Now we got the pop up chat going. We did it. I like that. Yeah, big boy is still there. Thank you, Hunter Vax. Because we be that guy. What would we do? No one wants to be that guy. Alrighty. I hope don't you make a huge giant thing and take up my house. Dang it. I wish there was a way to make that stay on top. Well, that's another chat. That's another chat. <laughs> I'll keep that's my mouth shut because we're talking that's a, about That's what she said jokes are allowed and they're actually encouraged in this house. <laughs> <laughs> Even if my kids don't get them. I get it. All righty. So now we're good. There we go. Okay. We did it. Oh, that's juicy. Hopefully. Ah, oh, that's nice. Oh. Uh, so this is the actual show, Ask the Story Bots. This is the one that feels like um, Sesame Street um, Muppets. I love the two. Okay, I'm, I'm just curious. Jib Jab, the guy, has actually voiced the two little. <laughs> yes. I knew it. I freaking knew it. Yeah. Because they're so, just well, so Well, actually, funny. no. Um, no. This, the, the yellow one is done by one of the producers, okay. animators, named Jeff Gill. Okay. Um, the boss is done by Evan Spirodellis. Who is I like the, the two owner. little guys that just laugh. And bang, boot, he is Greg. He's one of the brothers. Okay. So they're all in the show, but this is one of the animators. And and the, the Bing one, the yellow one, this is Evan right here. Okay, the green guy. Oh, yeah. So Evan, who, I mean, so they Jeff. I can't see you pointing at the screen. I know, I'm pointing <laughs> She's at the like screen. telling you I'm pointing for this, John. This, this guy over here. So, yeah. So the yellow one is Je the guy, Jeff, who plays him, looks like a young Jim Henson. And I record oh. right across from him. So wow. he fulfills my dream of working with Jim Henson. You've been, because you've he been out here for a while, right? Because I've been curious 17 about this. years. Did, did they do tours over at Jim Henson Studios? They're I don't know. I've never, I've never. I've never. I've been inside for we something. But I know I'm good. Yeah, no, and once Jim Henson so passed, it's not the same for me. Oh, I for wanted me, like him. I wanted Memphis, him. Being from Memphis and never getting to see any of that stuff. And but I could take it. you around the story bots. Like, I can give oh, you a I'd tour be glad there. To. I've done the tour we of the Warner Brothers animation there. too. Yes. Yeah, we well, should. under supervision, should be okay. Yeah, we'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah. I like when he says, don't dilly dally. I love this animation so much. It makes my heart so happy. It kind of reminds me of Jazz Park, where the man's just kind of bounce up and down. <laughs> but the back doesn't. Like, it's yeah. so gorgeous. It's like old 1970s electric company Sesame Street yeah. animation style. That's what lights me up. That. It's it's a very interesting, like, mix of multiple styles of animation yes, in the same thing. Yes, which is thing, genius. Which is, yeah, it's really cool, actually. You don't know if it's a server issue or not. Hmm. Still won't load for you. Well, I'm not going to refresh it again. It says it's working. Uh, if the uh, you guys in the YouTube chat, let me know if the timer is actually moving on the screen. That means it is. It is. It'll it'll archive at least, and you guys can go come back and watch it some other time. I mean, this show is meant for any little kids in your life. But the beautiful thing is, it's and for and for parents of little kids. Well, that's it. It's meant for families to sit and enjoy together, so that the parents will laugh just as hard, but at totally different things than the kids. Now we can do a thing like it's called radio, uh, where you can hear the show <laughs> oh. instead of watching it. The sound design is brilliant. Oh, she's so cute. I can't even. <laughs> yes, she does. Yeah, that's yeah, we're exactly really the same good thing I said, thoughts. too. I was like, oh, science is what I always say. Science! Look at her, she's so cute. She's <laughs> Then we all become airplanes. Oh my god, I love this show. And, it, and amidst a big giant pile of bunnies. And the bunnies keep multiplying. I noticed, like the longer that's you see. That's the joke for the parents. That's the grown-up joke, because those, those bunnies are over there multiplying. So the green bot is played by Judy Greer, the on-camera actress. She does lots of film and TV. She, you might know her from Arrested Development. Or a million things. She's in everything. She's on Archer. You may recognize her voice from Archer. Phrasing. You know, that guy, he actually talks like that. Like, that's his real voice. <gasps> Colander! I always put a hat on before I get... I'm always excited to see every episode and what kind of hat they're going to put on me before I go suctioned. <laughs> <laughs> because reminds me an animated, ver a kid version of J.K. Simmons. Yes! Me. Yes! That's exactly what he is! Give me an answer for these children. And give it's me a exactly picture of Spider-Man. 
Exactly. That's exactly who he is. He's just he's him <laughs> mixed with Oscar the Grouch, right? So good. That's true. I never noticed that. Yeah, it totally, totally Oscar. He's so Grouch. grumpy all the time. And then we do live, like the fact that they put live action in it. It's genius. And another bunny, bunny. another bunny joke. Like just for the parents. Just That's for, for the, the grown up. I actually have a claymation version of Bo they, that they, they actually use and created. Any kind of toys or anything? Oh no 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 no! What the, the toys they have are what they've made to use in the show. That's what I'm saying. Are, have there been any? any not yet. Discussions? Not yet. Okay. No, not yet. That's but I have says. the claymation one that they use to make her. So she see all the see, all yeah. the fingerprints that they scanned. I have her in my house. That's the actual so claymation. I don't know if you know Bill Cobb or not. Uh, yeah, actually, I can show you what he's done. He's the animator. He's the creator of Eat the Cat. And he, uh, I'm doing a favor and trying to Look at the it. fingerprints. You can see the fingerprints. Oh, I love that. These are some original cell animations in case you guys have never seen any of these before. Oh, so these wow. are the different layers. That's gorgeous. So you can, you know, stack up your guys. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he's the guy who actually... Uh, there he is, Kevin Smith. Yeah, Kevin oh, Smith. You guys can't see uh, it. I better off dead. The opening and the oh, sequence. Oh yeah, yeah. He did that. Are, are, you, are you a fan of that movie, by chance? I've seen it. Yeah. I mean, I'm not. I don't know it off by heart. Well, I was gonna say, if you're a fan, I actually have a gift for you. Save it for someone who is like a huge All right. fan. Well, I had yeah. one who was a huge fan. Oh. This is an original animated cell. Yeah, I remember. Show. If you that's would like amazing. one, I have extras. Oh wow, that's amazing. I have more than I can even hang up. But if that, you're welcome to have that. You oh, want to show it to them? The nice. camera's right up here. Isn't that cool? He gave me an animated cell. That's I've so always nice. been a big fan of animation cells. I do too. I have, I, have an Ed, I have an Ed, Ed and Eddie one. Oh, it's so cool. It's pretty powerful. Uh, I was going to wear my Ed, Ed and Eddie shirt today, oh, but I, I hiked and got it all sweaty. Oh, <laughs> so I didn't think you'd want okay. to sit next to that. That's okay. I'm not. I'm really not mad at that. I'm not mad at that at all. JK was great in Korra. He was, it was great in Spider-Man as well, playing himself. <laughs> I just love that he's in the movie. I mean, in the series. He is so sweet. And this is how I, through animation, get to work with really phenomenal celebrities right. that I'm a huge fan of. And I love Kevin Smith. I think he's a he's comic really genius, and he's very funny. That's Evan. He plays uh, okay. Hap. Rocking that man bun. Yes, he is. When I first met Kevin Smith, he didn't know who I was until I actually did the voice for him. He's like, oh, you're the guy. <laughs> Look, I get to act with Kevin Smith. It's like magic. I love this answer. I love that he doesn't really know. Sounds like an awesome kid. <laughs> well, I'd be super mega happy to help. So, what's your question? Okay. How do airplanes fly? Oh. Uh, since you want to fly, we thought you could tell us. Logic. We get laughed at a lot. <laughs> They're so cute. I love it. I hate to burst your bubble, kids, but I can't really fly. What? What? <laughs> Careful, guys. This is going to be some movie magic for you. It's going to blow your minds, man. <laughs> Other faces are like, oh. we don't understand. <laughs> Let's watch this super mega awesome model. You see, everything that's green can be taken out of the image so that all that's left is me. Then the artist can have the sky and the clouds. Ta da! Oh, <laughs> awesome. They can put in anything rainbows, rainbows. Trees, outer space, aliens, giant <laughs> I love that. I love claymation, stop motion. There, I love that. They put everything in here. There's like stop it's, motion, there's live action, there's CG, there's 2D. They're hand-drawn, there's so, everything. It's fantastic. My, my, my older kids love Chris Parnell's cameo. Oh, yes. That's, I'm not going right. to spoil that one for you because it's too funny. Yes, I totally about. forgot about that, yeah. <laughs> and remember, kids, oh, Netflix. You can get Netflix. Um, Ask the Story Bots is on Netflix. Yeah, it's on Netflix. Or, if, it, or if you're a parent of a kid, or if you're a younger kid, the Leapfrog products also have this as well. 
You can also on YouTube follow them, and there's lots of stuff on YouTube. Or storybots.com. Storybots.com. Right. That's me as the witch. I get to do a lot of additional characters for See, the show. This is why I my want to break dream, into this kind of This thing. is my dream come true stuff. job because the the characters I've played that are not my character are some of my favorite characters exactly. of all time. And usually the way, well, from what I've heard in, in my own experience, they often don't have you cast as those specific ones. They just have, okay, the script has this extra and we're pick me, pick me. I'll do that. And yeah. then they'll try out one or two of us. Well, I don't and even have to do like, that. I you? literally come in and the script is it's highlighted the for all of my additional oh, characters. Okay. They already pre-pick who Fred's going to do, who I'm going to do, gotcha. who okay. Jim Meskimen's going to do. Oh, that's right. Jim's in it too. Yeah, I don't so know. He does all the additional characters. Uh, if you guys watched uh, Pop TV, the, uh, the impression show, uh, Jim Eskimo was the co-star of that with Ross Marquand from Walking Dead. Aaron, he's kind of so, genius so and very funny. Stuff. He's in everything though. Like he's in everything on camera. He was uh, he was the voice animation. of genie in the uh, Disney's uh, TV version of, uh, of Aladdin. He's a genius. He is a genius. And watching him and Fred together is I one imagine. of my favorite things in the universe. I There's literally just sit back and go. I've always wanted to work with because I know they're going to be impossible to work with. Okay, just let it go. Oh, okay. Oh. Two seconds. You can stream and I'll show. I'm, I'm streaming track. by myself. There's a song about green because we were talking about green screen. Let me see. Do I have, are there any questions? Hi, Elizabeth. Did, does John really need to call his mom? I don't know. Yeah, there's so many different art styles. The sync is not working. If you go to a clown in Netflix and disable test participation, that's it. it will work. That sounds genius, CS Taco. <laughs> Whee! What else you got? I can answer questions if you... I actually don't want to touch anything and break it. Because if I break it... My favorite TV show? That seems like a really hard question. Space Jesus. Thank you, Space Jesus, for joining the stream. Um, I can tell you my favorite video game is Overwatch. TV shows are hard because every show that I'm, I marathon shows, I'm, I'm that person. So every show I'm into in that moment, it's my favorite show because I don't want to stop watching it. But I noticed that I tend to watch Parks and Rec, the British office and the American office over and over and over and over and over and over again. So they've got to be up there. Our hot water time. Hunter Vex, that is an excellent question. The problem is um, the answer to that depends on what you think is popular. That's a subjective question because uh, for some people, Persona 4 is the most popular. For some people, League of Legends is the most popular. For some people, World of Warcraft, Ed, Ed, Nettie. So it depends on what you, what's popular to you in your universe. So, I get yelled at from fans sometimes because they're like, you didn't include this. This is the most popular thing you work on. And I'm like, to you it is, but to other people, they've never heard of it. I don't know how to answer that question. Uh, Dragon Zeron, that's actually a good question. We actually had this conversation recently. Oh, really? Uh, about the Monster uh, Monster High and the way that they went around and tried to recast the negotiation things. I have a friend that's, that came on later on, but she was telling me uh, when I asked her, interviewed her about her experience, they she on purpose did not audition. Some people did, but she on purpose did not audition for any characters that did anything else that were other actors were involved with. But then there are some people who have to come in and sometimes they don't tell us and sometimes they do, but I always ask up front, like they'll send me an audition for Marcus Phoenix or Wolverine. I'll contact Steve Bloom or John DiMaggio and say, Hey, contact the are you guys yeah, not bottom, doing this? Or? The bottom line is for any production, I can't speak on the Mattel stuff. I don't want to get sued. Um, <laughs> but, um, for any project, if you happen to know that there's an actor who played that character before this audition, I don't care if you don't know the actor, contact the actor's agent, contact the actor directly on social media, but get the actor's actual story. I can't tell you the amount of times I've shown up for a job not knowing there was an actor playing a part and then showing up and they said, oh, by the way, you're matching this person. And I always know the person. So then I have to do the whole thing. Can I go to the bathroom? I'll be right back. And then I'm texting that person getting the actual yeah. story. Cause if they didn't tell, if they didn't tell me up front, then it's already shady. Yeah. So, um, usually I walk, I never, unless it's been, 
unless the actor has willingly or they pass walked away, away I mean, you know, well they have story. to pass away that's the number one safest way to get another job but if an actor has walked away willingly and has no beef with the production that's like that's what Chie Satanaka. They wanted to go in a different direction with the character, and Tracy Rooney was brought in to go in the different direction. She was an on-camera actress, not a character actress, so she was not on board with the change, and it wasn't in her wheelhouse. So she agreed that she, that she couldn't do the job. It wasn't that she wasn't interested. It wasn't in her dream to continue the video game anyway. So she left the project legitimately, and that's when I was brought in. But I was told the whole story and how that went down. So I have learned very clearly. Um, always contact the actor directly because there's so much shady business that happens and. The pro a lot of productions won't tell you the truth. They'll tell you a version of the truth. Mm -hmm. I've walked away from a lot of jobs. Uh, that's actually mm -hmm. how uh, Transformers thing came about. Was because of anything they said, they came to me directly instead of auditioning for me. They said, We want you to be the voice of Optimus Prime. Mm -hmm. First words out of my mouth were, Not if Peter Cullen's interested in it, I don't want anything to do with it. And their reply was, This is done, this is done as an ultra low budget series. It's we've already contacted him, he declined right. because it's not in his budget to do it, and we don't have the money to pay what he wants. So we're looking for somebody else. And if it's not going to be me, it's going to be somebody else. And I figured at least I would stick true to the character. And season two, they brought Peter Cullen back in, which I, as an actor who's a fan, I, of course, would want the original voice back as that, you know? And I, I didn't take his job away from him, and he didn't want to do it. Same thing with the Futurama video game. John Imagine was up front about, I don't, this budget's not going to work for me, or conflict and, and right. scheduling, or whatever, but he was up front. But there are also times where you're in the middle of negotiation with a company about the pay and uh, a lot of there are shady companies that will send out auditions before you haven't said no yep. you're in negotiation to say hey this is the this is the amount you should be paying me for this incredibly successful show mm -hmm. and they go and send out the auditions and if actors read for it that belittles the actor that's yep. actually in negotiations mm -hmm. so it, it you all, I mean, as an actor, you want to stand in unison with other actors because that's going to happen to you at some point where you're going to wish everybody stand and stood in solidarity so you could negotiate the rate that you deserve as an actor for the work that you're doing. Um, in, in one case for me, um, I was negotiating just to get my own rate. The rate that I had negotiated over five years of a successful series, they came at me offering me half that rate saying, oh, now that the show is huge, we're going to pay you half of what we've been paying you. And I said, that's absurd. I just want the rate that I've been getting. I'm not even asking for a raise, even right. though this is a hugely success, but I'm, I want the rate that I'm getting. They sent out auditions. I got a majority of my friends. Nobody submitted. <clears throat> a lot of strangers contacted me when they found out that this role was up for availability. And then and I kept saying, I'm in negotiation. Please don't submit. Don't submit. I'm in negotiation with them right now. Um, but they decided uh, not to stop negotiations with me. And whoever they hired, they paid less than half of what I was getting for five years for the same And it, it hurts the industry as a whole every time. Because happens. it lowers the entire rate for everybody. Because if we get, and then we keep letting them get away. Thank you for the popcorn. That's really good. Cool. <gasps> That's a big popcorn. A we can really share it. <laughs> right? Hopefully this is skinny popcorn. Um, it hurts the industry as a whole. So if you if you're interested in becoming a voice actor, you're going to get to the point. I've I've seen pay to play sites where you know some huge yeah, company, Walmart or Budweiser, yeah. and they're offering jobs that are national TV spots, two hundred bucks, five hundred bucks, and they know better. Agent. And they're not supposed. To, I mean, especially if they they are supposed to be doing their jobs, you know, through the union, they're not doing it the legal way. Yes. It's it's very very sketchy and shady. So there there is a bit of. A, a, I mean, I I get that. Unions can be a pain in the butt because I know that they can slow down the process. They have a ton of paperwork. They kind of sometimes very, they get in the way. They 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 make very it old school in their thinking. Yeah, well. sometimes they they get in the way of people want to do union, like want to make a project union, and then the unions like, but you can't do it. And you're like, why union? Don't be stupid. Make everybody union. Like do, help people become union. Yeah, yeah, I get it, but it's nowhere near the shadiness that happens in the non-union universe. The non-union universe, everyone will come at you and say that. Um, Oh, just for this project. This is how, this is just where we're starting. We're gonna go here later. That has never been true. Once a project is made for a little amount of money, they are not interested in paying you more because that means more money is going into their pockets. You're an artist. If you don't get that money up front, you are not gonna get it later. There is no amount of negotiating. They will replace you. 
It has happened a thousand times to a thousand people. I'll go through these questions pretty quick. Okay. Uh, Sad bro one. Uh, the thing I love and hate most about my voice. I love the fact that I'm able to to sound so much like other people, which has opened up a huge amount of work for me. But the thing I hate about my voice is that I always get auditions for 30 to 40 guy next door and never book it. <laughs> and that's me. That's like my normal voice. Well, I don't, I don't think about my voice. I don't, my voice is not something I, oh, I love this. This is my favorite machine right here. Look at the animation for this. Oh, it's so satisfying. <laughs> oh, I love that. I want that. As, I want a print of that on my wall. Um, I don't think about my voice. I don't think about what's good or bad with my voice because it's never been about my voice. I don't pay attention to my voice. I pay attention to my characters and whether they're believable. Oh, I'm the kid and the mom in this one. So cute. You know, this reminds me of, remember the Dexter's Lab episode that the kids sit in his like audio and they animated the entire episode. Yes. That's so good. This it's is so what it good. reminds me of. I love it. I love uh, it. My favorite anime is Cowboy Bebop. I don't know if you have a favorite. Um, yeah, Samurai Shampoo. Uh, there you go. Um, I, I have a ma an agent as well as a manager, which is not the same for most voice actors. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's because I do a lot of uh, trailer and promo as well as ADR, which is that's specifically what she does. But my agency gets me pretty much whatever, just anything that they think I'd be good for. I don't know what your situation is. Agent. Agent. Is it Asian or agent? Agent. agent. Okay. Uh, I know some Asians. I don't know. They haven't had me get any work. Um, <laughs> I have a few. Royalties, that, they're called residuals. Uh, it depends on the project. Right now we're in negotiations for all sorts of residuals seem to be going away because of streaming and the games, but exactly. we're looking for uh, alternate uh, ulterior uh, compensation at this time. And that's what the whole uh, performance matters. The video game strike is about. Is well, one of the many reasons you, you put, well, uh, yeah, that's what I meant to say. Um, uh, the fact that they don't have safety standards for motion captures is just kind of ridiculous. It's, it's absurd it's that they ridiculous. don't have like, it's, my friend it's so Chris, crazy. He was, yeah. uh, I don't know if you know anything about uh, what one punch man, He's the big baddie at the end of the no, season, and he, he got hurt. On He does a lot of motion capture uh, stunt that. stuff, and he got hurt, and nothing they can do anything about. Uh, Devin, would crazy. you mind banning, banning Axero, please? Yes, please. Um, so the residuals, it depends on the job. Like uh, stuff that I've done for, like Krampus was in a residual job. Um, there's a couple other things, like some, some national commercials and stuff. Most stuff doesn't have residuals, especially in commercial work where it's trailers. Like it's a buy, always a buyout. With animation, I think it's like three seasons and it goes into residuals. Oh, oh yeah. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Shifu Denjo Mao, thanks for joining us. He's a friend of mine. Remember that the trailer guy from the, he passed away, Mimki. He passed away when my career started 2008 or nine uh, is when he died. That was Don LaFontaine was the guy who came up with the phrases in a world and get ready in one man. Uh, yeah, he was like the legit old school guy. Do you with mouth noises excess? That's excellent. Mouth, uh, Apples? Every no, I, not I for me. me. Um, the, this is an interesting thing. You have to know who you are and what, because every time I eat an apple, it makes my mouth noise worse. So everybody's different. Just because you ask the advice of other people, we can tell you what we use for our chemistry, yeah. but you need to try everything for yourself. For me, I use a little, um, I use any sort of peppermint oil, uh, menthol oil, like pure oils, that uh, oregano oil, that just makes it all dry up. I had a girl I worked with, uh, Kathleen Barr on Ed, Ed and Eddie. She swore by Coca-Cola. It got rid of her mouth noise. That gave me mouth noise. Apples oh, gave me mouth noise. Anything with sugar gave me the, mouth the noise. The guy that did the first main voice for Honest Trails before I came along said he would down like two or three Dr. Peppers before he would... I was like, everybody's That's different. literally poison in an acid. That I, you're going in I also don't eat dairy. I don't eat bread. I drink a ton <laughs> of water. All of those things water. help with um, um, what the is things that, that create mouth noise. That, that makes me the mouth noisy. Can't yeah, drink it. That helps my throat, though. He's that, not, also talking about sore throat. I can't, but I can't. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. No um, worries. One quick Good second question. before I get I'll pull it off. Uh, for drink like sore throats, uh, zinc helps me, uh, honey lemon tea, mm -hmm. and tea. Uh, warm salt water, garlic with warm salt water. Yeah, all helpful. I, I but th that second. in a session, if I'm if I'm in the middle of a session and I have mouth noise, um, I, in fact, I'll, let me pull it out. I have a little thing that I carry. I order it on Amazon. I used it today. Let me get it. It comes in this this bottle. It's called Sunbreeze, and this is what it looks like. The little bottle, a little bottle like this, and I just, I just dab a little on my tongue. It's very pepperminty. It's mixed with it's essential oil. It's peppermint, menthol, um, cinnamon. It's got all sorts of stuff in it, but it, it gets rid of my mouth noise immediately. It burns a little bit, but it gets rid of my mouth noise, and it's very helpful. And I always have it on me, always. 
super smart. Love to learn. What age did you both realize you had a beautiful talent in voice work and wanted to pursue it? I didn't. Uh, oh, I guess the year, I guess in two, 99 was when I auditioned for Ed, Ed, and Eddie. So that was when I realized that I could act for cartoons. But I've been acting since I was three. I knew I was an actor at three. I used to go over to like the, there's a nice little old lady who lived next to me. She was like 92. Her name was Mrs. Proudfoot. And I would go to her Mrs. house. Proudfoot. Yeah. And I would go to her house and act out every Mrs. movie that I saw Mrs. Sunday Mrs. night Mrs. on Mrs. Disney. Every movie. And she would sit and watch me. So I kind of knew then. So for those of you best. watching, I see like it's a really fun like my favorite part of developing character is is going through the process of coming up with something interesting because I try to be very creative and and thinking outside of the box when I when I do an audition. Whoopi Goldberg, this is the one. This is the other favorite. Whoopi Goldberg. Um, this was up for the daytime Emmy. This wow. one. Wow. So I'll I'll do one take of my first audition and I'll totally scratch it and be like that's the way probably everybody else will do that and then I'll think what can I do that's not that. That's different. That sets me apart from everybody else. And it, I try to get him. It's, it's like what Ian McKellen said: acting is just pretending to be another person. That's, that's, that's my favorite part. <laughs> my favorite part is um, not reading breakdown, reading the writing. Like if it's good writing, it'll inform me of who the character is, and then through the writing, kind of like going intuitively with the with the writer of like, who could this person be and making really fun choices of usually I want to be a character I haven't been before. So I like to make things up and, and, and see what other like Bo was so much fun. They're like, we want a Julia child like thing. I'm like, I can, yeah, I can I've never this. played a Julia child like thing. And immediately I knew what they wanted. And of course, the sound that comes out is effortless, but it was putting on Julia Child and how much she loved food. And I was like, oh, yeah, this is does. really easy, actually, um, for me. So my fandom girl <gasps> said you inspired uh, Fandom girl said you inspired her to become a voice actor. Thanks, Elizabeth! Uh, <laughs> I'll try to wrap this up. But it looks like it's going to be cold showers for a while. Apparently, there's something wrong with our water heater. Oh, gonna right. They're going to have to contact the insurance company about it. So yay for me. Oh, uh, that's, that's nice. That's uh, real life. La, la, la. That's what's adulting. Up, what's up, Mike? Used to love one man alone on an alien planet. Yeah, he was the guy. He was the guy back in the day. What are mouth nodes? I honestly don't know. I know that that's, vocal nodes. It's not mouth nodes or so vocal they're, nodes. They're, they're literal little little things of flesh that grow on your vocal cords, yeah. and they mess up your vocal cords sometimes for life. I have had lots of my friends who are professional singers have gotten them because they they're created from. Um, uh, stress, undue stress. And video game actors are getting them more and more because of undue stress. Well, Good if you're question. wondering why Oxero or whatever, you wonder why you got banned dropping in bombs in yeah, the stream. Yeah, not, not cool okay, yet. ever. I'm guessing you were Harley Quinn. What's it like working with her? <laughs> no, you're wrong. That is not Harley Quinn. Sorry, James. Although I think anybody Puddin. would love to be. I could pretend to be if you want me to, Puddin'. <laughs> There's been three three voices for Harley. Oh, I don't know. All I know three. is that it's Tara, and that it's going to well, be Tara Tara's forever. The most, the most she's recent one. so good. I can't remember the actress she's that so was from the animated series uh, back in the day. I don't know. Have you had a character that was changed a bit based on your voice or performance you gave? That, now, that's a very good question, probably. Like, for example, with Bo on Storybots, it's a very organic, creative. When you're on a really Wait. good creative show, you, when you start a show, the characters start out one way, but then you organically grow and develop. So your characters become living beings, and and so they they develop naturally. Um, but like for Ed, Ed and Eddie, my biggest pet peeve was when all of a sudden Danny started the season. He decided to put us all in school, and he turned Naz from what I felt was a skateboard chick, pardon me, microphone, um, <laughs> into a cheerleader. And I was like, I have some words for you, Danny. Why is Naz now a cheerleader? Because I felt like she was the anti cheerleader this whole show. And then he said that because everybody in the show was based on people in his real life, oh. he needed someone to represent all the mean girls he went to high school <laughs> with and he just had to turn Naz into her and I was like thanks for the styling clothes Eddie it's customer appreciation day at the candy store and they're giving away jawbreakers for free <laughs> great I, uh, I had to make sure that they uh, that they didn't use contractions for Optimus Prime because he doesn't use contractions right oh yeah you they gotta make sure yeah. I'm like 
Well, and the worst is when, when a new writer comes to a show and they haven't and done their like, homework. Oh, you're totally right. I never even realized that. Well, you really know your character. I'm like, like well, dude, right. dude, come on now. Stuff. Didn't you put the character on while you were writing? I feel like you didn't do your homework, man. There she is. This is the moment I acted with Whoopi Goldberg in an Emmy, Emmy Award winning, no, nominated. I'm so excited. <laughs> I don't even we're both, care. We're both Emmy nominated. That's kind of cool. That's Judy talking to Whoopi. She does have great teeth. Yes, she does. <laughs> this is Zachary's favorite episode, by the way. The, <gasps> the, 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 the shootout. Oh, yes. It's the whole It was up for Emmy. Yeah. yeah. That, one, that one was just his favorite part. What's up, Pedroa? I'm so Dray excited. Young. That's a rough name. Um, I only voiced two characters for Ed and Eddie. I voiced nine for Monster High. It was fun. I'm really good at voicing multi-characters and acting against my own self. We discovered that the fun way because writers were like, let's see what happens if we give her an entire scene with herself. <laughs> and I was like, bring it. Okay, let's do it. Uh, on Dishonored 2, it was apparently very British. Oh, in the script. Oh, I we were, then I should have been on it. We I'm were, very British. Uh, we were, but no, it was written by oh. British people, but in American voices. So me being who I am, uh, I do. And the character I was doing was do. kind of like he, you know, he was a dog. Well, I just man, did it with, I, you know. And uh, of course, I left the original language. Right, I was like, you don't right. see a lot of wankers down here on the dock. <laughs> and they're like, you just see their faces cracking out on the other side of the glass. That like, didn't maybe work. we should change. I was like, I think my guy totally would say wankers. What are you, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I, I actually surprised Zach when uh, when John's son came out. I, I did the bow voice, and he, he was very surprised. Lit up like a Christmas And then he went away for a few minutes, and they came back, and he's like, I know what you're from. <laughs> you're from Storybots. And see, I can't do impressions around Zach because he thinks that that means I am that character, and I right. have to explain to him no. Or he, or he thinks I'm friends with everybody that's ever done any cartoon voices before. <laughs> Well, we're not married, but very good friends. He also my he already, wife's in the other room, and she's with water all, issues. she is amazing. So uh, yeah, I do not miss Memphis because the humidity there is so much worse than here. It's ridiculous. Oh right, uh, <laughs> I love these guys because they, they laugh. Uh, that's the guys. I love that. That's why I assume <laughs> I assume that was the guys who that was the Jib Jab guys because no, they, yeah. it just seems like that'd be a perfect. Character. And I'm pretty yeah. sure they're just a couple of guys in the office that do it, but I love them so much. And see, now you're in a different style of animation. Yes. So totally great. different animation house. And they hire This is John Imagio if you didn't recognize it. That's John Imagio's the son. Not in this episode. And this one sure sounded like No, in the Why is the Sky Blue? Okay. It is. Because he's blanching in his mansion. Yeah. He's, uh, it's okay. You don't know until you ask. The big boys going around daily business is for us. Nah, not really, Bim Mike. Uh, I, I don't. If it comes up naturally in the conversation, I usually say something about it, but I'm just going around going, I do the blah, 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 blah. blah. I've been told it comes across braggy, so I, try, I don't want to be that guy, you know. <laughs> but it's all—it's always fun to challenge yourself as oh, an yeah, artist. I, I love doing. Like I just want to—I like to I try like try things, and then if it works, then the people who are there, uh, we get to celebrate it, and if it doesn't, then the people who are there, we get to make fun of me and point and laugh and be like, "That sucked. Good try." <laughs> <laughs> James, I don't know of any local ones. Um, I booked I a few know. that were national that might have just been on local radio, so maybe that's a possibility. Yeah, this is the part. Zachary's favorite scene is this favorite whole saloon. Food. Salon, saloon. I like all food. I'm a big fan of food. Mashed potatoes. They're my, they're Pizza my is good, but I'm not very good with the gluten. I love poutine, like being a girl from Canada for no, real. Not. And I mean not real the, poutine. Not the Russian president poutine. Not Putin. <laughs> poutine. Um, I like sushi. I love Indian food, like all Indian food. I seem to have an Indian food addiction, but I'm just for real. I, I really love food. I love food. I hate living in LA because I love food. People here don't eat. Not enough. Mashed potatoes is my kryptonite. I love them so much. I, I had them on Sunday night with garlic and cheese in them. Oh Shut God. the front You're door. Me. It was so good. Uh, I don't know about doing a $20 thing on the street, but you can go to, I have a site set up for fans 
and it goes towards autism awareness. It goes to Autism Society of America. It's called it's Fiverr, which I don't recommend voice uh, voiceover people trying to do jobs on there. Right. But for personal fan requests, it just depends on how long it takes me to record it. Minimum five bucks, and it's going to a good cause. And that way, I'm not doing things for free. That takes me away from getting my job. Oh, done that's a good idea. So, uh, yeah, raised like fifteen grand for autism awareness. Like, that's over awesome. That, over like three years time. Three Jeez, years that's time. really good, eh? Oh, then my Here Canadian came out. Guys. I said, "Hey." Here comes the bacteria. It's good, right? Oh, it's yeah. so good. I mess up them teeth. Stinky Bart. What a great name. Hi, Dirty Dan. The characters are so classic. That's Evan. He likes to play the stinky guy, the mean guys. The mean guys. Villains are so much fun. I know. Yeah. One thing only. <laughs> and they build that, that like all the sets they build in gym chat yeah, they it's, have a it's, whole it's a section of yeah. like animation they an literally set they too. build the little sets it's so much fun to go in and see the process of where they are and building the, the live action uh -huh. sets it's just if it, and there's puppets and materials everywhere sure, brushy Oh, that's a good question. Uh, that's actually usually something I bring up at the end of, of, of a stream or a, or an interview. Um, any charities that you support and things that yeah, you like Yeah, okay. I'm really deep into um, – oh, hang on. i got to get the right address for it because he will be so mad. <laughs> I'll, if I'll I, promise to link this in the video um, afterwards as well. If you send me hang on. Words. Let me get the – I got. it's a GoFundMe. i got to get – I say go – let me just double check. Go fund me. Combat Radio Christmas for Children. Uh, <laughs> let me find it. I love their little giggles. There it is. But it'll be seven spelled out, I think. Cleaning erasers is fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <they're the> laughs. Crikey. Hang on. I'm almost there. They kind of remind me of Beavis and Butthead. They do. They yeah, absolutely G -G do. Be Be Beavis and Butthead. Exactly. Now we got a stop motion one. Right. You got some great songs. Right. The writers are, are spectacular for this show. Yes, they are. This is hard. I'm hoping the next time that we, we she comes over, I, we can. Uh, I think it'd be really fun if I play one of your games and you play one of mine because I, I don't have a lot of what? time to play a lot of games. I need so to, I would be like, what kind of games are you oh, in? I'm not very I try good to, at first I try person to shooter. Stick to the easy ones like the point and click stuff. Okay, so, okay, yeah, I can do that. I think yeah, fun. I'm getting to it. I'm getting to my favorite charity. <laughs> XCOM is a turn-based game, so it's you don't have to be good you know, at shots. It's all like chess. Oh, so, oh, yeah, I can do simple. that. Yeah. I can do that. Um, anyway, if you go, if you Google Combat Radio at Combat Radio or on Facebook, go to the Combat Radio it'll Christmas be late, for Children. I'll get the link um, for it, and it'll be late. They they now. do it every year. Basically, they raise money every year, and they donate a lot of money to social services, a lot of money. Which go for, and we say social services specifically for families who are going through such difficult times that they're homeless. And every year, um, at the first uh, Saturday of the month. We do a huge event in Valencia where they literally ship in, like, I think we got up to 600 families with children that are homeless, and they got, um, they get a whole day, a day off from whatever challenges they're living for that period of time. They get to meet Santa Claus. They get to have a full breakfast. The parents can't, don't have to stress for that day. There's lots of presents. There's, it's just really amazing, and it's a real gift. Um... Oh, I'm going to sneeze. I can feel the tickle. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> uh, I don't think we've ever worked on anything together. Not that I know of, anyway. Yeah, but that um, may not... I mean, you'd have to go through all the credits. Yeah, I mean, I haven't done Oh, here it is. Stuff, so. This is okay. This is the ridiculously long URL. I'm going to just read it. GoFundMe.com slash combat dash radio dash Christmas dash Seven spelled out. I'll That's try a big to remember one. this. I'll type it out in the chat for you yeah. guys. Yeah, GoFundMe.com slash combat dash radio. Almost. Dash Christmas 
Dash seven spelled out. That. There you go. Copy and paste. Yeah, and any any and amount. I'll link it helps. in the. Uh, I'll link it in the video. And if you follow you um, Combat Radio. Uh, Radio Breakfast with Santa. Um, you'll yeah, be able to, you'll on. be able to see uh, like Fred Tattashore does it with me every year. Steve Bloom's there every year. Mary Elizabeth McGlenn. There's a ton of celebrities there. A lot of TV producers, TV stars. Um, everybody comes out for this event. It's a it's a real uplifting. Uh, oh, it's just amazing. Love it. I 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 love it. Yes, I, we absolutely will make sure that we tweet it out and add it to the video descriptions and things once it's gone uh, on online, like not live any longer. Thank uh, you. If you guys have any other questions, this episode's almost over and I'm going to call it a stream because I've got people pestering me to record things for them very, very quickly. It has to work. They get mad at me for you. And I have a long drive home. Uh, please say the dark night rises actually the dark night sets because it's k and i g h d that guys. makes sense <laughs> yeah would it be the bright sun rises and the dark night it, it sets i, I think guess. so <laughs> but thank you hey everybody who's watching if you have a little kid in your life or you you have family members who have little kids please little brother, uh, autistic turn them on members. to the ask the story bots on netflix because uh, we're very proud of it and season two is going to come out next year and i think a christmas special maybe this year Brothers, sister, babysitters, aunts and uncles, teachers, moms and dads, teachers, teachers for free content. This is a great Tons show, and you'll be content. you'll be shocked at the voice cast and the celebrity on camera cast. The on camera cast for season really two great. is off the chain. Yeah. Um. Anything upcoming that you're allowed to talk about that you want to talk about? That you know of? I honestly, with the strike, I feel like I haven't worked forever, <laughs> so I don't think I have anything coming. Oh no, they're re-releasing the D Dot Hack GU games for um, okay. console, and that was a great game that I was in, and so uh, yeah, so I'm still in that. And I first found out about you from a mutual friend of ours, Danielle. Yeah, she's in Skullgirls with yeah. Danielle, and that's also how I Danielle found out McCray Christi and Christina League of v. Legends. Uh, that's how I found out who Christina V was, and you actually been in Ladybug, uh, which is Christina's like huge thing now. As a, I was, stuff. yeah, no, no, or I had main, lead main characters, okay. but there were reasons. I'm I had going to based leave. on only on DB, which could be I wrong, had so. to leave uh. that show for many <laughs> of the reasons we've discussed earlier. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's got a it's got a bizarre fan following for a French show. <laughs> It's, it's a French, it's yeah, a French. French anime. It's a French anime that's dubbed into English. Correct. Uh, yeah. So. Yes. I've been meaning to go on hikes with and, and runs with Ezra. I haven't got up to the level where I can run. Right. <laughs> Me and Todd have our corner still working out just getting exercise, period. Got it. I don't uh, think Todd has a problem with that. He's just so busy. He's a little bit of a junkie. He's a busy. He's a busy. He's still an exercise dude. junkie. I know he gets up at 4 o'clock in the morning just to do push-ups. Because he has jobs from like 6 o'clock. Because he also does casting and directing. Yeah. He's yeah, a busy, he's a busy, dude. busy dude. It's true. Very true. Um, yeah. And I'm going to be posting. Yeah, a lot of anime, actually. I Go totally to forgot website. yesterday to finish posting the Twisted Tunes panel. I'm so like sorry, guys. I will post it. Uh, I will post it tomorrow. This is going to be today's video after it goes public and the twisted tunes because I have to edit together. I found out that my camera died halfway through the for, through the panel. Holy crap! And so, and luckily, There's my machine that I want a picture of. <laughs> I want it on my wall forever. Um, I love it so much. Uh, John DiMaggio came on as a guest as a guest cameo. He wasn't actually supposed to be on the panel. Just showed up on his own. Uh, and I came on at the end uh, to uh, kind of end things out. But it's a freaking huge cast. I get Phil Moore up there, Tom Kenny, Jess Arnell, Marissa Marsh. Me, and John DiMaggio, and Troy Baker. Nice. And like that's and it's we were reading Back to the Future and various voices and things. That's super fun. It's so funny. Um, so that'll be on there. Yes, GoFundMe.com slash combat dash radio dash Christmas dash seven. Correct. Uh she food dash a mouth. That is a mouth. Thank you. Oh, my favorite oh, relaxing song. Bear. I freaking love the dancing bear. I know the dancing bear is pretty awesome. My favorite <laughs> relaxing song, I literally listen to whale song. To relax, but they put rail song with uh, ambient music, and that really puts me into a zen place. Well, Hunter Vex, I live here now, so if, if they want me on more, they're just going to have to bring me on more. I'm a little nervous about the about the Australia because I noticed that their their titles today changed to like standard titles, so I, they may have cut their budget for our title guy, our 3D animator. Uh, animator. I don't know. I don't know. I, I have some. I have some links. Wonder Woman. Them, so yeah. Neither. One more last thing. Who do you like most, Batman or Superman? And thank you for saying the line. You're both awesome. Uh, between those two guys, Batman's my, Batman's my jam. I don't know. I don't know who I would pick. Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman's fantastic. You know Rachel Kimsey? 
She's so sweet. She's uh Yeah, I know. Yes, yes, I know. For one of the new shows. Um, there's a great Lyle is also one of the other Wonder Women. So is Kari. Kari Walgren has been uh, Wonder Woman. Tara, Tara Platt. Tara Platt. There's been lots yeah. of Wonder Women. Yes. But I mean, uh, that's one other th- question. I just never remembered I was going to ask you. Like, as far as your bucket list goes, like, what's left on there that you haven't done I yet? just want to be on a Star Wars animated series. That's my bucket oh, list. Oh, that's kind of cool. That's the last um, thing on it. Storybots has satisfied about everything 100 else. things on my bucket list. <laughs> The, between first, second season and the Christmas special, most of my bucket list has now been done, except for being on an animated Star Wars series for a very long time. Not just for guests, for a very long time. You want me to say, you shall not pass. There you go. Um, yeah, that's uh, Star Wars was on my list up front. Just anything Star Wars. Yeah. And within my first couple of months, I booked uh, Captain Rex for the toy commercials. And well, they do have a hundred more male characters cool. to That's one true. female character. It wasn't network TV. It takes or it wasn't me a lot games, longer but to it was get something Star Wars, and I thought that was white cool. males get. Uh, yeah, a lot it's, longer it's a lot for me. For, for, for any minorities and women in, in this business, and I, I actually read a study on this thing where the human ear can hear less differences between female voices than male voices, which makes it. Automatically harder. For I you. believe that was a probably something created by a man. Probably, they, yeah. it was a man who purposely turned to his <laughs> women's voices out. I find a lot of the studies on women that are done by men are very interesting. <laughs> I'll believe it when it's done by a woman. I, I, I'll be perfectly honest. When it when it comes to like listening to sound to, to voices and not seeing what's going on, there are some that are very similar, and I'm like, I'm not sure who that is exactly. Well, the same can you be know. said for men. That's true. There's like a ton I'm, of men I'm, that. I, I can pick out, I can if they pick were out. just talking in their normal voices, men sound the same too. So for a long time, so the white men I'm, I'm usually pretty quick. I'm usually pretty quick at catching like who that is. Uh, but Marisa Marsh was one of the few that got me. I thought he was John Cusack in the Lexus commercials. And he's I'm not. too sexy for my shirt. Too sexy for my shirt. You're a big voice, voice girl. girl now. Oh, I'm too sexy for, for my, my shirt. Pants. Too sexy for your pants. Too sexy. <laughs> Uh, as far as stuff coming up for me that I'm allowed to talk about, uh, it's all out now. The DLC just dropped for XCOM 2. Exactly. The, X, the DLC for uh, for Dishonor 2 just dropped. I am in that one. And there's another game that I'm in that I cannot talk about that's out next month. And there's another one. I have no idea when it's coming out, so I can't say other than that. Um, and I did some ADR for a, for a major film, but I can't say what that is either because I really don't know. They didn't tell us. I think I'm on a Cartoon <laughs> Network series show, but I don't know if the app came out, so I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about it yet. Yeah, but the know. episode might have come out, and I was I'm a guest star in that show, on a Cartoon Network show, which is appropriate because I used to be on Cartoon Network. <laughs> but that's that that's fun. like one of the last things on my bucket list is to become a recurring fan favorite main character of some kind in, in a network TV cartoon somewhere. Yeah, um, I think that would be really great. Yeah, it is a pretty awesome. Um, and experience. I'd love to be the voice of good. a network, like. But those guys, yeah. Uh, the closest I came was promos for NBC, but I mean, those guys don't get to have any lives. Oh. They are they are bound. They're golden chained. My, no my, interrupting my, cow on this one. It's not as my <laughs> my uh, my manager calls it the golden change. Your chain it. chain. Jim Eskimo. Wee. Three questions is our business and pleasure. So if you enjoyed this, uh, we should have you back to watch some of the other stuff that you worked on. That'd be freaking fantastic. That's fine. I kind of like the, the, the behind the scenes info that you've given us alone. It's yeah, it's me. pretty awesome. So you guys, make sure you follow her on all the things. Oh, yeah. Uh, Twitter, at Aaron Fitzgerald. Um, Instagram, at Aaron Fitzbadass. Twitch, Aaron Fitzgerald. Um, I think those are the... From there, you can find me everywhere else. So. And, and I my will website, make sure to link Aaron all of your things. Uh, and she Thanks. also... Which I've been trying to get more of my friends to do. She also streams on Twitch. I do. Which is really Mostly cool. Overwatch, but I did Final Fantasy VII because that's my all-time favorite game. So I did that all last year. But which now which it's one were you in? Is that the one you were in or is it another one? No, I. that's just a game I'm addicted to. Ah, um, I'm in not in. Final no, I don't play the games I'm in. I think that's, I think that's so meta. That's like Deadpool showing up in his, you know, and he showed up in Honest Trailers. Okay, the what? No, that's not true. I do play Dragon's Crown, but you can't stream it because it's on PlayStation Three. Oh, and I, ha- I disagree because I have a way you can. Stream yeah, but it. I'm not gonna. I don't have that technical know-how. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm saying like, you can come over here. And oh can, yeah, yeah, yeah we totally could do that. That would be brilliant because I'm. I'll, I'm I'll in do level. all the work. For I'm it. all in. I don't play my character. I play That's, as Patrick Sykes' character. Why do you think I have this character. huge stack of consoles right, right. over here? I, I never play my character. Well, except for I am currently in Fat Princess Adventures. I play because I am one of the Avatar characters. So I play with. It's set to my voice. 
And I do stream that on occasion because it's the funniest game ever made. I, like I hilarious streamed, funny. I didn't really know how it was going to work out, but I, the, uh, so many you, streams. So yeah. <laughs> Shifu, you've been there, man. <laughs> you've been there. We bred those chocobos. We got it. We got the Chie. We got the Naoto. It was real, man. 2K gave me some games to give away for XCOM. So oh, that's I awesome. So I streamed XCOM as Council Guy. So I turned off the lights so I look like him because you can't remember see his face. Right, and he tells course. you how badly you do it. I played through the game. And I was in, it was insane how much the fans freaking loved that. And oh, I'm that's like, awesome. Maybe I should, maybe this is a thing. <laughs> you know? Maybe it is. I'm just saying, you know. Uh, and I'm, I'm all about making sure that you guys are happy and then you love the, you love our jobs as much as we do. That's cool. So uh, anyways, I'm going to link you guys out to all the things. And thank you for coming on so much. You're welcome. Thanks for I'm having so glad me. you were in the neighborhood. Yay. 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 Um, and uh, you guys make sure to subscribe and I'll, I'll link you guys up and share this stuff later on. I'll put an awesome thumbnail of you because you're amazing. Popcorn! <laughs> and more, more of the popcorns. More popcorns. Uh, anyways, you guys have a great day and I will get the Twisted Tunes panel up tomorrow. Word. And we'll, as, as the famous LeVar Burton said, we'll see you next time.